you guys. Welcome back inside of the Plastic Planet. I'm your host, Nick Nack, hanging out with you guys tonight. Guys, I had a little video planned for you guys this evening, but unfortunately, I couldn't get the right materials uh, in line for it in time. And so uh, instead, I'm going to shift gears on you guys tonight and do something that actually might be a little bit better. Um, as you guys know, if you're a longtime viewer or subscriber to my channel, I'm down here in the arcade slash archive room of the Plastic Planet. I actually have two rooms here in the house that my wife affords me, and that's very generous of her. A lot of guys don't have that, but I do. And uh, one, one, one room is uh, an, an entire like wing, basically, of the Plastic Planet that I have dedicated to a galaxy far, far away, or it's my Star Wars collection, as it kind of does deserve its own room, and it's really the origins of my collecting life, and so it's it's got the most stuff to it. And I typically do a lot of Star Wars on this channel, but nevertheless. Um, so anyway, that's that room is upstairs, but right down here, as you guys know, if you're like I said, if you're a long-time viewer subscriber, this is the arcade slash archive room where I keep my arcade one-ups, and I also keep a real hodgepodge of collectibles down here, ranging from a number of different uh, intellectual properties that I, I have loved throughout the years, including a large portion of that is Transformers. I've got a nice Superman collection. I've got a really fantastic Star Trek collection. I've got an electronic train set on the ceiling. I've got my fish tanks. And uh, yeah, it's just a really, really fun room. And I've been meaning to get a full-on room tour of this room uh, for a long time. I haven't done a room tour down here in about two years, but it's just, it's never quite been in a place where I wanted to share it in its entirety. Something is always jacked up down here because I'm always moving stuff. I'm always working down here. I shoot a lot of videos down here. Just It always is torn up in one one way or another. It's torn up. And so I haven't really wanted to, to, to show it off in its entirety. But so tonight, I'm not going to do that. But tonight, I'm going to probably start a, ser a new series here on the Plastic Planet where I show off one intellectual property at a time in, in, per video. And so tonight, we're going to start out with Star Trek. Why not? That's my other sci-fi love outside of Star Wars, and I've got a number of Star Trek collectibles, some of which I've never actually shown here on the channel, and so we're going to do that tonight. So this is for my buddy Mav, who's a big Star Trek fan. Big shout out to you, brother. Uh, this is for you, and uh, yeah, let's do it right now. Let's look at some Star Trek shit. All right. Space, a final frontier. These are the voyages of the starship Enterprise. <laughs> Alrighty guys, so check it out. I really only have one large shelf full of Star Trek collectibles, unlike other intellectual properties here on the Plastic Planet. Uh, Star Trek, is it's, it's got a solid representation, but it's not a giant one by any stretch of the, of the imagination. I know there's probably Star Trek collections out there that totally would dwarf mine, but I've got a nice, modest, good-sized collection here, I do think. So anyway, I'm going to go from the top to the bottom and show off to you guys what I got up here. So anyway, up here, guys, I got this awesome... Uh, over here, we've got a uh, Playmates, what is that, 10-inch uh, Captain Picard from like season six, season seven, when he wore that overcoat. Kind of cool. And then, of course, I've got a giant uh, Enterprise D up there. That, is, of course, is from Art Asylum slash Diamond Select. Uh, the top shelf, actually, as I'm going into this, is really mostly next generation stuff. Um, although there is a uh, Miranda-class starship there. That, of course, is, I think that's actually the Reliant, but I kind of think of it as the Bozeman in that episode when the Enterprise got stuck in a time loop. And uh, the Bozeman kept coming out of a, coming out of a, uh, like a time, time, distortion or something and hitting the nacelle the, the enterprise d and destroying it over and over again of course it was captained by a uh, kelsey grammar you know uh frazier from cheers yeah pretty awesome great episode so anyway, i kind of keep that up there in, in that in that respect and i've got a, a stand i ordered an acrylic stand i ordered offline uh, offline online from ebay uh with holding up that enterprise d because the enterprise d uh, uh art asylum enterprise came with just a dog shit stand and i had issues with that for years Alrighty, so moving over there, I've got a nice assortment of vintage, I think, Galoob Next Generation figures. These, of course, came out in 1987 with the Season 1 premiere of Star Trek The Next Generation. I do remember uh, going to Kmart and seeing these guys. And, uh, of course, I didn't buy the action figures back then. I didn't have the kind of money to be spending on action figures uh, you know, when I was in the 6th grade. Uh, so I really wasn't, wasn't buying uh, Star Trek figures at the time. But I remember seeing these, and I did actually pick these up. 
uh, just a couple of years back, more than a couple of years back now, maybe about seven, eight years ago, found them at one of my local comic book stores on card and I opened them, man, I opened them. But you know what? You can find these guys on card for like six, seven bucks at places. So it really wasn't a big loss and the cards were kind of thumped up anyway. So anyway, I got most of the crew there missing. I think I'm missing one or two figures, but I've got, I've got Tasha Yar there. And then there is unbearded Commander Riker, Captain Picard. Lieutenant Commander Data, and of course, Lieutenant Worf and Jordy there when he was still in his red uniform before he got promoted. So pretty damn awesome. And then behind them is the Art Asylum Enterprise E from, of course, Star Trek First Contact and Star Trek Insurrection, as well as uh, Star Trek Nemesis. So uh, the later Star Trek, the next generation films. Uh, it's a fun ship. I've always kind of liked the uh, aesthetics on that one a lot, although I'm probably more preference to the Galaxy class as opposed to what is that? The uh, What is that? An Ambassador class? I forget what the class on that ship is. But anyway, there it is. Pretty damn awesome. And then, of course, I've got a Diamond Select Captain Picard in command chair. Picked that up oh, maybe at Comic-Con a few years ago. More than a few years ago, like 13, 14 years ago. But anyway, pretty damn awesome. And then behind him is my original VHS Star Trek, the uh, original Star Trek film, Star Trek one through six. So they're kind of up here on this shelf, but kind of, kind of a little bit of a, uh, a little, a little off on this shelf because the rest of it is next generation, but still pretty damn awesome. That's a nice looking shelf. If I don't say so myself. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise. All righty, guys. So coming down to the next shelf, and we're getting into my real love of Star Trek here, and that, of course, is the original series, uh, television series, as core, as well as the original series films. And I've got this awesome bridge uh, collection here. And this, of course, is from Star Trek, the motion picture. This bridge set is cardboard. It was done by a third party uh, company. And I, I use the term company very loosely. Uh, bought it off eBay and it came, you know, all completely flat and had to cut it out and put it together. It was kind of a bear to do and I didn't do a real good job with it. I'm kind of all thumbs, but I think it looks pretty damn nice. And it was actually uh, originally made for the Mego uh, three and three quarter inch Star Trek char uh, characters that came out uh, in 1979. Uh, it would include this Dr. McCoy here, and that's the only Mego Star Trek figure I have, as I discussed in the video I made for this uh, for this piece. But anyway, I substituted in the Playmates uh, figures, and they're a little large, but I think from a perspective point of view, they look actually pretty good in there. And I've got uh, I've got uh, Lieutenant uh, Lieutenant Sulu in there. Uh, Lieutenant Commander Sulu, I forget what his rank was in, in, uh, in uh, Star Trek The Motion Picture. I've got Admiral Kirk, I've got Dr. McCoy, I've got Captain Spock, and of course I've got another Sulu there, but I guess back to him, so he just looks like a generic crewman. And then of course I have got uh, Lieutenant Commander Uhura back there as well. So pretty damn awesome looking uh, uh, environmental display here from Star Trek The Motion Picture. And then as I move along the shelf here, I've got the refitted Constitution class USS Enterprise, one of my very favorite ships in all science fiction. Uh, this, is, of course, is the Diamond Select version, and this is actually the Wrath of Khan version of this ship. Um, it's pretty damn awesome, and it's got some sound effects if I can push it without knocking it off its junky stand, because the stand's kind of junky, and the batteries are dead, so we're not going to be pushing it anyway. But yeah, it's pretty damn nice. And then over here, I've got some Hot Wheels. Uh, these came out from Mattel, I think. Hot Wheels Mattel, I think, uh, in 2008, when the 2009 Star Trek film came out. These were on the shelves at Target. Pick these up. These little smaller ships, of course, that is the USS Reliant there, and the Again, the refitted USS Enterprise. Above that, I've got another Art Asylum ship. This is a battle-damaged uh, Enterprise B as seen in Star Trek Generations. Uh, that's a pretty awesome looking ship. The Excelsior class USS Enterprise, the second in the line after the, the uh, famous Constitution class. So looking pretty cool. That's actually after it had its run-in with the Nexus there. So it's all battle-damaged and uh, it's got some damage there from the right next to the sensory array where Captain Kirk got spit out into space. So uh, that's kind of cool. All right, so moving down the shelf there, I've got the late, great Ricardo Montalban, as seen as Khan from Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, or Khan Noonien Sin. So pretty damn awesome. Uh, that's a pretty awesome figure. That's of course, is a modern Mego. It was uh, sold just recently at Walmart. Still might be at certain Walmarts. I don't know. I haven't seen him in a while, but did get him at Walmart. Then, of course, I got the before mentioned uh, Mego, Dr. McCoy there. And behind them is a uh, Star Trek V, The Final Frontier uh, media magazine. You know, back in the day when eh, they still kind of do it, I guess, a little bit, although print's just not what it used to be. But back in the day, you know, you'd, a new movie would come out. And then, of course, you could go to the drugstore or the bookstore and they'd have 
uh, you know, basically, basically whole magazines dedicated to the film and you could buy them and, you know, look at all the pictures and read articles about the movie and stuff. And that's exactly what that was because I was really stoked off my balls back in 1989 to go see Star Trek V, The Final uh, Frontier. I was in the seventh grade and it was the summer, was the summer before eighth grade for me. And that was, that was a magical time, man. Magical time. Good time to be a Star Trek fan too with Star Trek films and Star Trek Next Generation on TV every Saturday night. And it was a good time to be a Star Trek fan back in the late eighties. Then of course down here, I've got a, uh, Micro Machines Enterprise, uh, uh, this is Enterprise A, I think. I've got these uh, splashed throughout my Star Trek collection. That was actually, the Micro Machines was the first like introduction I had to collecting Star Trek back in the mid nineties. I found those at Target, started collecting them. It was like one of the first collectibles I started collecting as not, well, basically an adult because I was a teenager. Uh, so, although I remember being really embarrassed to go buy these like, oh my God, I'm buying toys. Why am I buying toys? I'm 17 years old. But anyway, yeah. So I've got these sprinkled throughout the collection. You'll see more of those. Alrighty guys, moving down the shelf here. I've got my favorite shelf here in my entire Star Trek collection, if not my entire collection period. And that is, of course is my original series shelf down here with some premium love from QMX in there, as well as some Art Asylum and some color forms as well. And I'll be getting to all these in just a second, but absolutely awesome shelf. The, uh, Star Trek, the original series is definitely my favorite version of Star Trek. It's the original, it's the greatest. It's so visionary, epic, and iconic. I just absolutely adore it. And I grew up watching like everyone did. Um, I was obviously too young to watch it when it was back on NBC because I wasn't born yet. But I grew up watching uh, the original series in syndication in the 1980s and 90s um, on my local uh, KWGN station here in Denver every night at 10 o'clock on a black and white TV in my bedroom. Space, the final frontier. Um, it was just, it was a magical thing for me and uh, I absolutely adore uh, this collection here. It just really is uh, symbolic of, of, of that, of, of those times I had, uh, you know, watching Star Trek late at night. And I absolutely love these QMX Star Trek figures. They look absolutely incredible. And I really regret not picking up the McCoy when it was available. I got the Kirk and Spock on re-release and I'm so glad I did. Um, I, I initially whiffed at, at all of these when they first came out. Probably because I had a lot of Star, Star Wars uh, Sideshow and Hot Toys on pre-order. And it's hard to get everything, as you guys can understand. But I did get them on re-release, and I'm really glad I did. Although, I, like I said, I do regret not getting the McCoy. Uh, maybe they'll re-release it, but I kind of doubt it at this point. I also got the command chair there. That command chair is actually still available at Sideshow. But, you know, good luck Sideshow selling it if you can't buy the figures for it. Um, it's sort of sort of weak on its own. But anyway, I absolutely love these. And that backdrop I got off eBay, if you're, if you're curious. It's a detolf background but it blends into the shelf absolutely beautiful uh right next to it is a color forms adventure set from star trek uh that was a gift from my good buddy down under danny from australia he is a subscriber i typically don't want my subscribers sending me gifts and things in the mail but this was a special circumstance and i really 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 do appreciate it uh danny and uh, I love it so much, and thank you once again for it. Um, it just looks incredible on this shelf, and it just really makes makes this shelf, really pulls this shelf together. And again, it's one of my very favorite shelves in my entire collection, period. So thanks, Down Under Danny, for that. And then, of course, I've got the uh, Diamond Select, like I said, the Diamond Select, Art Asylum, uh, Kirk, Spock, and McCoy there. I've got Kirk there in his casual captain wear on that command chair. That command chair actually came with a different Captain Kirk, which is down the shelf. And that Captain Kirk was the one from the second pilot of Star Trek. And that is, of course, the pilot of Where No Man Has Gone Before. And it came with that, that little uh, telescoping communication thing on it. But I popped that off and made it a little more uh, uh, representative of the uh, original series as a whole. But anyway, so that is a nice looking uh, smaller version of the command chair with uh, Kirk, Spock, and McCoy. Definitely the trinity of Star Trek. And that's why I so regret not having them in premium QMX form. But I'll take them uh, in this form for now as well. Uh, over here, I've got a Johnny Lightning. Anyone remember these Johnny Lightning Star Trek collectibles? And this, of course, is the USS Galileo, the shuttlecraft. That is beautiful. I love that piece a lot. It looks absolutely dynamite. And I've got that right here, sitting here next to their, the, the, the command chair, looking nice. And then, of course, over here, I've got the Art Asylum USS Enterprise. I've got two of these. Look how beautiful that is. Look at the nacelles light up. The blinky, blinky lights on the side, the bridge, everything. Really, really nice. And then, of course, 
Uh, down here, I've got a nice little uh, Captain Kirk bust. I forget who made that. And then I've got a lenticular uh, transporter room picture kind of on the side there, as well as that nice space backdrop. Then I've got a Johnny Lightning, I believe, uh, Romulan bird of prey down there as well from the episode Balance of Terror, starring the late, great Mark Leonard as the Romulan sub-commander who went on to also star as Mr. Spock's father, Sarek. So very, very cool. Just dropping a little Star Trek knowledge for you guys. Yeah, I love the original series so much. So anyway, absolutely fantastic looking shelf. Love it. Alrighty, guys. So moving down the shelf here, I've got another Star Trek the original series shelf. And there's a lot to take in on this shelf, a lot of volume on this shelf. Uh, Star Trek, the original series is definitely the overwhelming lion share of my Star Trek collection. And that's just out of personal taste, but nevertheless got a lot of stuff to get at. So let's get on it right now, including this Franklin mint plate right there. Mini plate. That's a mini plate game with a little stand. It's just a nice looking Star Trek collectible. I remember seeing all those in the Sunday magazines from the new Sunday newspaper. You know, they always had the, the Franklin mint plates and all kinds of junk. And I always wanted one. So I got one as an adult from an antique store. It's, it's kind of cool. Behind that is the, my original VHS copy of where no man has gone before. I think I bought that at Walden books. Anyone shop at Walden books back in the day. So anyway, that is uh, that piece right there. Hopefully the lighting is holding up for you guys. My lighting down here isn't as good as it is in other places here in the plastic planet. Uh, right next to it is a playmate star Trek bird of prey. Bought that at, uh, Bought that at a local comic book store, actually spent $30 on it just a couple years back. Again, this is a 1990s uh, Star Trek Playmates and actually had the box, came in the box. I think I unboxed it here on the Plastic Planet in a video uh, from about a year, year and a half ago. But uh, anyway, very, very cool. Maybe even two years ago, actually, now that I think about it. But anyway, very, very cool. Um, if you want to start a Star Trek collection on a budget in 2021, just go with Playmates. You can get so much awesome shit at a very reasonable price, at least as far as uh, vintage and retro collectibles go. I mean, Star Trek Playmates figures and, and, and starships and play sets are so much more cheaper than what you would find uh, with anything related to like say Star Wars, for example. So uh, I don't know, just my little recommendation. And like I said, if you wanna start collecting Star Trek today, go with Playmates. Speaking of Playmates, here's two more Playmates figures. I've got the Gorn there from the episode Arena. And then I've got Vina there. She was from the original pilot, The Cage. Uh, the green Orion slave girl looking very, very cool. Got some Romulan ale there in a glass, in a, in a big vase there in a glass as well. And I don't know what the, the, the yellow pea looking shit is. But anyway, uh, those came with a figure and a pretty damn awesome. I've got a uh, alien from Talus 4 there back there with the big head. Uh, the big headed alien there. That's from Talus 4 from the original uh, pilot, The Cage. Got some awesome 8x10s back there with Kirk and spock there and then of course i got a black and white of the original series cast very awesome wish i had some autographs i'm not really an autograph hound but i, I, I would have loved to have had those guys as autograph i'll tell you what pretty damn awesome uh behind that is another vhs copy that is the folian web there very awesome episode got another art asylum enterprise right here uh, batteries are dead in that one unfortunately and it's on a uh, third party acrylic stand because again art asylum the stands were dog shit but uh, if you go third party and get some nice stands and they do look pretty, pretty awesome on them. Uh, I've got a uh, Art Asylum Captain Kirk figure there. And uh, that is from the episode Mirror Mirror, as well as another Diamond Select uh, Mr. Spock. That's more of a statue, but it's sort of an action figure. It's got a limited articulation. I don't know. He's kind of a dumpy figure, but he looks okay. Uh, the real dumpy figure is the Captain Kirk there. He came with the same set um, and I bought them at Toys R Us several years back. He's just a piece of shit. Uh, he barely stands up, so he's kind of disappointing. Got some uh, re, uh, some some brand new Mego love there. These were at Target just about a year or two ago, and that's uh, uh, Mr. Sulu there and Mr. Chekhov. Very very cool. And then of course I've got a collectible lunch tin up there as well. I think I bought that at Hastings. Anyone remember Hastings? It was like a media play kind of store. It had you know CDs, movies, and collectibles. God, I miss those stores so much. I miss Hastings and media play. And uh, what was the what was the ones in the mall? Suncoast? Oh, I miss those stores so much. You guys remember those? Uh, if you're in the United States, I bet you do. Uh, and you're my age. Because those were just the mecca of buying cool crap at retail. Um, very, very cool. So I got that at a Hastings. So anyway, that's that shelf. I think I covered everything. Oh, there's another uh, Micro Machine Enterprise down there. Um, very, very cool. So anyway, that's that shelf in a nutshell. But looking really, really nice. <laughs> All 
Alrighty guys, so moving down the shelf, surprise, surprise, I got another original series Star Trek shelf, most of which are from Diamond Selector Artisan, but there's some also some older pieces on here as well, and we'll just start over here with an older piece, and that is of course is the 12 inch or 1 6 scale Gorn figure from Playmates, picked that up off eBay a number of years back, probably paid 20 bucks for them, uh, pretty damn cheap, and I think they're still pretty cheap at this time. I've got another figure that's the alien from the episode. I want to say, let that be your last battlefield. Very iconic Star Trek episode uh, with a warring race. And the two last members were still uh, of, the, of that race, still trying to kill each other. Uh, one had black face on the left side and a white face on the right side. And the other one was the opposite. And they, they, their, their respective sides were at war for for hundreds and hundreds of years, they'd driven their entire species to extinction. And this is a very cool, uh, very cool social uh, social message in that episode. Very, very nice. So anyway, uh, some other awesome cool figures. Uh, there's an, uh, the uh, Art Asylum Captain Kirk from Where No Man Has Gone Before. That came with the command chair. I have uh, two shelves up. Very, very cool. I've got a tin like Star Trek magazine from the 1970s there. Bought that at Hobby Lobby a number of years back. Got a uh, large size. Uh, original uh, Franklin Mint uh, Star Trek Enterprise collectible plate back there. Very, very cool. I've got the uh, Art Asylum Mr. Spock there uh, communicating via mind meld with the Horta from one of my very favorite episodes, Devil in the Dark. That's pretty damn awesome. And then, of course, I've got Captain Kirk and Mr. Spock dueling it out there from Art Asylum there on Vulcan. From Amok Time, again, another classic, iconic episode when Spock goes into Pun Far, which is nerd talk for Spock gets horny, because Vulcans have a seven-year mating cycle, and uh, when they go into when they go into when they go into heat, uh, they get really just nasty, and uh, and uh, Spock needs to take care of his primal urges, so they so Kirk diverts the Enterprise to Vulcan uh, in the, in the midst of a sensitive uh, diplomatic uh, mission. And uh, just epic episode. It's just I just love that episode. Kirk puts his career on the line for Spock. It's sort of a harbinger to things to come uh, with the, with the with their loyalty and their friendship. Just a great episode. And then of course I've got the iconic uh, goatee Mr. Spock there from Mirror Mirror. That's the evil Mr. Spock from the evil Star Trek universe. Uh, that's a great episode again from the episode Mirror Mirror. I've got the um, VHS copy. I remember buying this VHS copy at Walgreens, not Walgreens, Walden Books. I bought that at Walden Books. The Space Seed, the original season one episode, which of course was the precursor to the 1982 film, Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan, starring Ricardo Montalban, or I should say guest starring Ricardo Montalban, uh, the first appearance of Khan in the Star Trek universe. Very, very cool. I've got a model, that's a uh, that's an AMT model, I want to say, of the USS Enterprise, but I went with the USS Defiant. It's a little dusty. Uh, the Defiant was the ship that got lost in the episode The Tholian Web. So very, very cool, and also resurfaced in the uh, Star Trek, the next gen, or no, sorry, Star Trek Enterprise season four episode um, when they were in the mirror, mirror, the mirror, dark mirror universe. Uh, so very cool, uh, iconic ship from Star Trek. And there is, of course, the Art Asylum, uh, Captain Kirk and uh, uh, Khan figure from, again, the Space Seed. Really, really cool. And then, of course, there is Captain Kirk and Khan duking it out from that very same episode of the Space Seed at the end. When uh, Kirk beats him senseless with a with an engineering rod, it's it's just so awesome. I love that episode so much. I uh, got another uh, VHS uh, copy back there. That's a Corbinite maneuver, if you guys can see it, as well as another uh, tin uh, tin plated version of a uh, Star Trek magazine, uh, tin plated cover of a Star Trek magazine that came out in the 1970s. Again, that was a reproduction I got at Hobby Lobby. And then there's another novelization back there, Vulcan's Glory, that takes place during. Uh, the original tenure of the USS Enterprise under uh, Captain Pike when uh, Spock was just, I think, a lieutenant commander as opposed to a uh, commander. So very, very cool episode. Um, so you can see Jeffrey Hunter there as Captain Pike and, of course, Leonard Nimoy, a young-looking Leonard Nimoy. Um, so very, very cool. So anyway, that's that shelf. Pretty damn awesome. That's a great shelf. And now we go to the dog shit shelf. <laughs> Alrighty guys, so moving down, we all have that shelf. This is my redheaded stepchild of my Star Trek collection. Uh, just, it's all dusty and it doesn't even get lit down there. Now that there's some, some bad pieces down here, there's not, but it's just, it's just, it's just a mess. I never look at the shelf because it's at the bottom and I don't know. Anyway, I do have a Playmates, uh, Klingon Bird of Prey. That's a great ship actually. Uh, bought that at like a garage sale for like five bucks. Um, it's broken, but it's pretty cool. Uh, that's from Star Trek three, I believe, Star Trek four. I uh, got a Art Asylum Enterprise, NX-01 Enterprise from Star Trek Enterprise. 
And then, of course, I've got the dirty, gross, nasty Kelvin Universe Enterprise. Man, I gave it a chance. I gave it a chance back in 2009, whenever that movie came out. And I even bought all the Burger King glasses. See all the Burger King glasses down there? Yeah, they're still in the original box. And I gave it a chance. But, man, that was the first time I realized that J.J. Abrams was a hack. Oh, I hate that man. He'd go on to ruin bigger things than Star Trek, let me tell you. Uh, just just a little little commentary, guys. Just my opinion. But anyway, that ship belongs down here on the dirty shelf. Um, I still have it. It's still part of my collection, but I don't like it. So that's why it lives down here, just collecting dust. So anyway, there's my dirty shelf. There's a Jonathan Archer art asylum figure down there. He deserves better than that. I actually actually really enjoy Star Trek Enterprise. Um, the, the, that ship and him deserve better than to be on the dirty shelf, but that's just kind of where they are right now. So anyway, there is my dirty shelf. My dirty, gross, dusty Star Trek shelf. Yeah. Alrighty guys, so as I mentioned earlier in the video, if you're gonna start collecting Star Trek memorabilia and merchandise, uh, go with Playmates, or at least that's a great starting point because you can get so much awesome, cool uh, collectibles for really, really good price. Um, I picked all these Captain Kirk figures up recently at one of my local comic book stores. Actually, I bought it at a Hero Headquarters. That's a store here in Denver, Colorado, a nice, awesome comic book slash collectible store. Bought all these guys for under 10 bucks each, and I showed them off in just a video recently here on the Plastic Planet. Bought all of them, actually, at the same time. Uh, right as William Shatner was getting shot into space. Uh, I just thought that was a cool time to buy some William Shatner love, uh, including this piece here, which uh, my good buddy Mav, as I shouted out earlier in the video, let me know this was from a deleted scene from Star Trek uh, Generations that they never used. Uh, really cool, man. I would like to have seen that deleted scene. I'm sure I could find it on the internet. But anyway, very, very cool. So anyway, these are really, really awesome. Again, nice pieces. I've got a Lieutenant Uhura over here. Never opened her, thought about opening her. Uh, picked her up for like 20 bucks. Again, same store over at Hero Headquarters. Uh, very, very cool. That, of course, is the 10-inch scale, I believe, the Collector Series. Really, really nice looking action figures, actually. Really, really pretty. So uh, that's a really, really good piece as well. Alrighty, and finally tonight, guys, I found this just a couple weeks ago, and I haven't shown it off at the plast on the Plastic Planet yet at all. And I'm wondering if I'm going to unbox these or not, because the box is pretty thumped up. But I got this classic Star Trek's Playmates Original Series Crew set for $40 at a local action figure secondhand store here in town. And really, really cool. I remember seeing this, this piece on the shelf in 1993. Um, I remember I was like bra shopping with my high school girlfriend. And I, and I snuck off just to check out the toy aisle, which I hadn't frequented a toy aisle much in those years, uh, just to see what was going on in the toy aisle. And I saw this. And of course, it was very expensive back then. I certainly couldn't afford it at 17. Um, and I've seen it for varying prices over the years, never picked it up. But I found it for 40 freaking dollars right there, see? Uh, at, like I said, at a local action figure store here called Out of the Box that we have here in Thornton, Colorado. Anyway, bought it for $40. It was a steal. Uh, again, the box is pretty thumped up, but it's still really cool. Very presentable. I could keep it in the box. You guys are going to see some shelf wear all over it. But uh, really cool. It's got all the bios of the entire crew on it. Oh, that's really, really cool. But anyway, $40 freaking dollars for a collectible that is now almost 30 years old. So again... If you want to start collecting Star Trek, go with Playmates, man. I just tell you, you can you can get a great collection at a pretty reasonable price. And they're fun to collect because they're cheap. And it's a guilt-free, guilt-free collection, man. It's not like it's not like buying, it's not like going and buying hot toys on the secondary market, man. You're not gonna be out hundreds and hundreds or thousands of dollars, man. Just you know, you can you can just go out and you know buy a piece here and there for the cost of a you know a Chipotle burrito. So pretty awesome, you know, for 30, 30 year plus old action figures to find them at these prices. That's, that's fun. That's just really fun. Well, alrighty guys. Well, that is going to wrap things up here on the plastic plan. I hope you guys enjoy that uh, tour of my Star Trek collection down here in the arcade slash archive room of the plastic plan. We'll be doing more of these videos in the near future. I've got some other intellectual properties I can get to, including my transformers, my Superman collection, and as well as others. So we'll be getting to those uh, in another video. So stay tuned for that. Anyway, guys, like I said, that's going to wrap things up here on the plastic planet. Please like, share, comment. Please do subscribe, guys. And remember, life is also very, very short. So get out there and fill it. Fill it with some plastic crap. Till next time, guys. Later. Love you. Bye.